This conference will now be recorded. Praise the Lord, everyone. To God be all the glory. To God be all the praise. The Lord is just always worthy um, to receive our praise and our thanksgiving. And we're so grateful that he gives us each and every day to uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Just to be in his presence, that's an awesome thing. I don't take it lightly. I say good morning to each and every one of you with the love of God. Let us go in prayer. Father, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We come uh, thanking you for the meal that you will serve us this day. We know that healing is the children's bread. We know that, Father, the word of God is our life. It's our life source. And so we thank you this morning, oh God, to feed us, oh God, the uh, beyond anything that uh, we're going through, that, Lord, the word will come and conquer it through us. Father, I ask as your vessel, forgive me of every sin, thought, deed, motive, known, unknown, conscious, subconscious, any level of my existence. I ask that you apply the blood of Jesus unto me now, that you will fill me with the Holy Ghost and power, that you empower me to speak your holy word, your holy articles, and that we, Father God, will get, you said, all that we get, get a good understanding. And so to this morning, Father, we just come, Father, just asking you, Lord God, make clear uh, uh, and sound understanding what it means hearing your voice, Lord God, in different times and situations of our lives so that we can be both hearers and doers of the word. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We do um, greet you this morning with the love of God. And Wow, you know, I would say, my God, <laughs> these lessons, uh, I, I thank God that the Lord, the Holy Spirit knows what to say even when I don't. But So we're going to go to James um, in your Bibles, if you didn't mind, chapter four, please. And um, verse eight, and it truly says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. That's what it says in our devotional book. And in the scripture, it says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, he sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded man. And I begin, let's go back to verse 1, if you didn't mind. I begin to say, when I read this, I said, James, I said, James was writing uh, the body of Christ because uh he 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 was uh giving some strong rebuke here uh because of the conduct of the people of God. And it says from verse one say, From whence cometh war and fight it amongst you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not, ye ask and not receive, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers, adulterers and adulteress, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is intimate with God, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God? Do ye think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusts to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resist the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Submit, therefore, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded men. And so as we have read our James and read what he was writing, uh, we could have a pretty good understanding. There was some correction that needed to be done. And in the correction, his answer or his resolution was that we will resist the devil, but draw nigh unto God. And let's read our commentary. It says, and let's read the commentary, and then we'll go back and we'll uh, go back and we com commentate on the commentary as to what the Word of God is saying. We're going to put it together. And it says, one day early in her mission service in India, at Amy Comer uh, Carmichael sat under a tree studying her uh, Tamil grammar. She had a growing sense of 
a listener, a presence she could not ignore. She recognized the Lord and listened with him to grip to uh, great uh, graping, uh, graping needs of the country. The blood cried out of the, from the ground. The call of the people to him. Time stood still. The presence was all that mattered. Let's continue to read the commentary. Of her, le her later work with orphans, young girls serving as temple prostitutes and boys roaming the streets, Carmichael wrote that she sometimes saw Jesus kneeling along in prayer for them, and she would go and kneel with him. She uh, sent an unspoken communion with him as with him in his love and compassion for a unlovely, broken, wounded people of the world. No words needed to be exchanged in this spiritual conversation. It was a binding of, of hearts to accomplish divine purpose. She drew close to God, and he drew close to her. The voice of God is often far deeper than words, and sometimes even deeper than pictures or imagines. He has a way of making his heartbeat known to those who hear and incline towards his. The sensitive spirit will not insist on breaking the conversation down into words. Words might interrupt the, the conversation altogether. Heart-to-heart -heart knowledge goes deeper and must not be cheapened by trying to defend it. In God's presence, the best response is simply to embrace the profound work he is doing to yield our heart to his uh, impulse and to accept that his love is indescribable and beyond understanding. In that yielding, he expressed the express expressible and in part the uh, infinite flow of his own feelings and the heart knows he has spoken even though he has not spoken a word and let's go to back to James and how are we going to put this together as to her uh, experience and listening and hearing during uh, great times of trouble and travailing in her work but she heard uh, the voice of God, and listen, and this is going to be weird, but not the word of God. <laughs> she heard the voice. She heard, she sent him. She sensed his heart. She sensed uh, um, uh, um, his spirit that you sometimes you cannot put into words. There have been times in our lives that we have gone to God and we have gone to God in worship and praise and there has been a presence of God in our lives that words could not utter to describe uh, that experience. All we know that we was in a place of glory. And so when um, the way she is uh, 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 trying to entreat to us about the listening and hearing the voice of God, she's trying to say sometimes the Lord's voice is not uh, articulated in words and is articulated, I, I believe it, it uses uh, special moments and times. I believe that God uses uh, sometimes it, it, when we are at our worst uh, and when we are so travail with the trouble around us, he, he his voice come in as a, uh, uh, um, as a symbol of who he is in the in, in the in the form of peace or in the form of joy in the form of contentment in, in, in the form of strength he's speaking but what is he saying it's like you don't really kind of at that moment need the articulation of the word you just need to hear the voice and so james here let's go back to james James here was, um, like I was saying, he was um, making some he was cor making some correction and, and 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 to the body of Christ as to behavior. 
brothers and sisters fighting in war with one another and uh, just doing different things that, you know, committing sins and acts that are not pleasing with God. And, and he was saying, as you join with the world, then what you're doing, you're going against God. But James said, listen, this is what you need to do. You need to resist the devil. And let's just hit that just real quickly. Resisting the devil is the same thing as you denying your flesh. It's the same thing as you crucify your flesh. It's the same thing as you are, are walking in faith and not in sight. It's the same thing as you believing the word of God over any word. Resisting the devil is not saying, oh, devil, go away, because the devil is the spirit. And the devil is a lying wonder. The Bible says he's a liar and he's the father of lies. And so when you resist the devil, you have to resist lie, lies, and, but you have to embrace truth. A lot of times we think that it's a physical thing that we do to resist the devil. But the devil works in the realm of the spirit. He works in the hearing. He works in the vision. The devil is an illusionist. The devil will always make a, 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 a molehill, a mountain. A devil would take a lie and run and make it a, a big race. Come on. And so in order to, to, to resist the devil, we must uh, cling to God. We must go to God. And what we mean, even though we're in Christ and Christ is in us, what happens in times of testing, in times of trial, we must go back to the one who is the one to help us to overcome our, our adversities in life instead of believing the lies of the enemy. You know, if the, if the doctors say you're dying and you're dying with cancer, you're dying with COVID-19, you're dying with this. Well, the doctor's not evil. The doctor's just doing what the doctor know to do in their skill. But what is evil is the report. Please put it in order. What's evil is the report. And the Bible says in Isaiah, so who report shall you believe? And, he, and the Lord was asking this of his children, people who are connected divinely to him. He wasn't asking the world. He was asking us. Who reports are you going to believe? See, the doctor didn't give you the cancer. The doctor didn't cause your problem. So the doctor is not your enemy. The report is. The report is your enemy. And so what happened is that when we get a report that, that doesn't line up with the report of the Lord, what is the, the report of the Lord? The word of God. The will of God is God's report. It says in James, I believe. That God, I, I wish above, no, John, I'm sorry, do forget, forgive me. John, he says, I wish above all that you prosper, be in health, health, as well as your soul prosper. That is the Lord's report. And, and when anything in our life don't line up with the word of God, come on, you don't have to cleave to it. You don't have to receive it. You don't have to even repeat it. You don't have to have this 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 report uh, uh, constantly uh, 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 going in your mind over and over again. Oh, I I'm going to die with cancer. Oh, I'm going to do this because of the circumstance and the situation and what's being said. Said words have gone out and the report has been made known. You got cancer and you're going to die. God says, as we draw nigh to him, what was the purpose? See, we have to live purposely before God. You don't do anything just to do it. Come on. We're not just happen to be here. We have purpose and God got a plan. We have purpose and God got a plan. And the purpose of drawing nigh to God in times like this so that we can hear God's report on what has been reported concerning the cancer. We were praying for a lady uh, um, yesterday, so the church was really crying out for Sister Faith because the enemy came in, and this is why I'm using cancer, uh, like a flood, and, 
and, and, and brought cancer all over her body and just different places. And she had to get emergency surgery uh, uh, yesterday. And the pastor, he was just saying, listen, saints, let's pray some more. Let's pray some more. Let's pray some more. Even though the report looks kind of bad, the reports look difficult. The reports look like, like she's not going to make it. But because we pray the prayer of faith, because we took it back to God, glory to God. Can I tell you today, she came through that surgery with flying colors. The death angel had to retrieve from her bedside. Praise be unto God. Because why? Clinging to God, you need to hear God's report that you can get God's results. If we do not get close to God, come on, children of God, then what happens is that we become targets. And so the enemy can throw anything at you and on you because when we don't get close to God, we we walk away or we're not under that covering of his promising, promises and covering of his word. Let's read Psalms 91 together, please. Let's do that together because we just read it. Uh, it, 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 it is a divine protection for the children of God. It, it's God's word. But it's like a, it's like a uh, revelation to us. This is how we abide. We don't abide uh, in the open for the devil to take us out. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. And let us read this because the reason why I said this because we said hearing from God. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So we got to always go back to the Word of God when we want to know what the Word of God is saying. One second. Um, my vibe. One thing about these uh, electronic things, when they want to uh, freeze up, they do that. But that's okay. I got a remedy for it. I got a second Bible on my phone. So, but anyway, it says. Um, let me get the Bible. One second. Thank you for being patient. Let's get this. Let me get that. Hold on. The Bible. Let's go to um, Psalms chapter ninety-one. Let us let us see let's let us see about hearing from God. Let us see about going to God because that's so important. Because a lot of times we put what the Bible say and we do natural things and we do not realize the Bible is a spirit. It's, it's spirit and it's life. So you cannot always put natural practical when it comes to the word of God. You gotta put spirit with spirit and you gotta put the word of God with the word of God and what how we uh come to God and it says he that dwelleth he that dwelleth. Do you realize not someone that, that rents uh apartment a, a couple weeks or something. No, he he that dwelleth is he that lives, he that abides in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that clings to God, he that goes to God, he that stays with God, he that trusts God, he that hears God shall abide. Abiding means you got to anchor down. You got to put your feet on the carpet. And you got to unpack your bags. And this is your place where you stay. This is your living quarters. Amen. And it, and the and the somebody says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. The writer is saying, I am in the house of the Lord because I'm with the Lord. Now I can, me and him, we have a conversation and say, God, I'm safe now because I'm in you and you in me. When she was hearing a, a sound, the writer saying, uh, Carmichael, she was hearing a sound during the time of the, the there was stressful times in, in her ministry. She, she, she. She, she she needed to hear something because of what she was experiencing and seeing others experience. When you're a missionary, you're in a missionary field, and one thing you see in a missionary field is the suffering of the people. And what do you tell them? What do you tell them? Some people, some people say, I go through a lot, and I need more than just, just Jesus. But can I tell you, that's all you can give people is Jesus. 
People don't realize even what you got is still Jesus. Do you realize in God we live? In God we move. In God we have our being. And so the songwriter says, I was saying the Lord, you are my refuge. You are my, you're my protector. You are my protection. You are my provider. You are Dr. Jesus. You are my healer. It says, surely he would deliver you from the snares of the fowlers and from the nuisance pestilence. Do you realize that's what's Hampering our lives, the enemy used as a weapon, nuisance and pestilence. Cancer is a nuisance and pestilence. All these things that we are going through, that's all they are. But the Lord will deliver us from the snares of it. That means the weapon of fall, but it won't prosper. That means the devil will get in your face, but the devil won't take you out. The devil will get into your family, but because, but because you are nigh unto God, you dwell in the secret place of God, that family is going to be released because why? You have a divine connection and you have a divine conversation with God for your family to be delivered. Do you know sometimes, in most times, in most families, you can have families, but it's only maybe one, maybe the most two people that might be in a family that are really saved, that is being, being separated from their family to be the intercessor to pray for their family and they kind of be the ones that the family shun they be the one that the family don't get close to and and but god had chose you to be the intercessor chose you to be the watchman on the wall for that family why because the enemy comes to snare the enemy comes to destroy and to kill and to steal. And so, therefore, God strategically places us in our family. Sometimes he strategically places us on our jobs. Sometimes our job is full of hell. But guess what? God needed your light because of all that darkness in there. And he don't need you to faint with those people. He needs you to draw nigh into him. He need, he, he needs you to come hear his report about the situation. And that's the purpose of drawing closer to God because he is only God that, 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 you know, what he, he, he switched the, uh, he's a change. He's a, he changed the game where the enemy seemed like they're winning. He, the one, the Lord gives us the touchdown. The Lord give us that final, uh, uh, play and we, we win the score. We didn't look like we were winning, but we had, we had already, the game was already fixed because why? God is the one that fixed it for us and why we were able to hear his instruction. We were able to see what he was saying, even though the words wasn't there. Verse four, he covers thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We need to hear the Lord and listen to the Lord in our times of trouble. There is no way we need to go further in the rain, further in the trial, in the tribulation without God. Without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we will fail. Our life will be drifted like a ship without a sail. Too often, we are doing too much without God. The the, the 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 lesson is that we need to go slow, close to God. We need to come to God. Do you realize if we don't come to God, then we leave God from coming close to us. God can't get close to us. Why? Because we we're not we're not close to Him. We're close to what's going on in our life. We're close to the lies the enemy is throwing and bombarding us with. We're close to the report of 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 of, of the things in this world. Do you realize we're overcomers? Do you realize when Jesus stood up and said, "Rejoice," and again I say, "Rejoice," and He said, "Why are you rejoicing?" Jesus says, "Because I've overcome the world," and He said, "Because He did it, we can too." We always have to stand in a position of faith. We always have to stand in the position that we're strong in the Lord, not in ourselves. And this is another reason why we come nigh unto God, because what it helps the strength of God to strengthen us through what we're going through, through through the calamities, through through the to the tragedy, to to anything that can be heard at us upon the earth. Why? Because we are as light. And we as witness of the world, to the world, they need to see how we overcome, to know that the God that we serve is real. This is our witness. This is our, and, and it's our witness without 
saying a word. Live the life, children of God. Live the life of victory. And let's go to five. It says, Thou shalt, that we shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. This is another reason why we draw nigh to God. When the enemy comes like a flood, we need to be in a position that God's standard is over us. God will raise a standard for his people, but his people first must be in a place where the standard is. Let me tell you something. God is not going to raise a standard for our teacher Williams if I'm in a place of adultery. Come on, somebody. I need to repent and come out of that dark place, come out of that place of sin, and then I need to abide under his holiness and his righteousness. That standard is for his people. It's there. I always tell you, we are not positioned for the for, for the things God already has for our lives. There are things that we must come out of. We must come out of doubt, doubt and fear, all type of things that's not pleasing to God. The Holy Spirit is the light in us. The Holy Spirit is the truth in us. The Holy Spirit is the way in us. He would lead us to the way of righteousness and holiness if we would trust them. And in verse 8, it says, Only with thine eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked. How often are we seeing the wicked uh, being rewarded? We're not talking about with good things. We're talking about justice. We're talking about the Bible says that, 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 that whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. A lot of times, you know, our enemies, we will never see the reward because we're too busy holding our enemies uh, uh, in unforgiveness. I'm going to tell you something. Someone did something horrible, terrible to you, forgive them with the love of God and the strength of God. Because if you don't, you will never see the reward of your enemy. Sometimes the reward of your enemy is that God will save them. God will deliver them. Instead of they becoming your enemies or being your enemies, God will make them someone that will love you and that will be your friend, a true friend for real, because you've already went through the storm. Of, of, of betrayal. You already went through the storm of the things that they have done to you. And when they have come to true repentance, true repentance, and, and, and the Lord will to use them or will use them in your life to, to, to be a blessing in your life. You know, the, the Psalms um, 23, it says that he uh, set a table before us in the presence of our enemies. A lot of times people don't understand the table that God sets before our enemies. You do you know the table he sets before our enemy? When our enemy sees us that, that we didn't go down because of what our enemy did. When our enemy sees that we, we're survivors, when our enemy sees the joy in our life, when our enemy see that God is still doing great things in our life, we are we are looking up and not looking down. We 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 are loving, we're we're full of, of the spirit of Christ and not the spirit of our flesh. I that's how God sets the table. That's how the, the enemy look at us. Wow. You know why? What you got to smile about? What you got to be happy about? What you got to be hopeful about? That's God setting the table in the in the face of our enemies. So it makes our enemies think that what they did, we should have been out. But no, God said, you're not out. You up, and you're gonna go forth and do great things. And so we need to let God do that. But we have to do that by by being close to God. We cannot do it. Children of God, uh, of being idle, we cannot do it. Uh, of, of being, being in 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 the, the the way of the world. We in this world, we're not of this world. We are citizens of the kingdom, and we just have temporary residence here. So therefore, don't 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 anchor here in the world because the Lord says He's coming back for His bride. And he's going to take us out of this place. So therefore, we need to be the light. We need to be the salt of the earth. We need to be a vessel that God can use, that we can uh, bring people uh, to Christ through the gospel. Amen. Verse 10, and it says, because thou hast known, thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. We have, listen, we have made it known. That the Lord is our habitation, how we live every day of our life. Please don't think, please, please don't think that we're not seen. Not only God sees us, but we're seen. There are people that cannot get their eyes off of your life because they can't believe you living the way you live. And you can't believe you're this victorious. They can't believe you're this healed. They can't believe you're this delivered. 
because what was thrown at you was to take you out. And it babbles people, why are you not dead? Could you remember the time when Paul that was on the island and the snake came and bit him through the fire? The Bible, the, Bible, the Bible said the people was looking for him to die. The people said he must be an evil man because that snake bit him, but he didn't die. And that's what your enemy is saying about you. You didn't die. You were snake bitten. You were, you were stabbed in the back. You were lied on. You were mistreated. And the reason why you survive, the reason why I survive, because we draw not into God. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is our hope. God is our life. And drawing nigh to him, we draw nigh to him through his word. We draw nigh to him not only just, just reading his word, studying his word, but we had to obey his word. We had to do his word. Come on, somebody. Verse 10 which is my favorite, verse 11, I'm sorry, which is my favorite, excuse me, 10 and 11 is my favorite, we'll read 10 and 11. It says, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near, neither thy dwelling place, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, even in the midst of a disaster, even in the midst of a storm, the Lord will keep you. Even in the midst, let me tell you something, even in the midst of lack, God will keep you. I can remember back in my early days, when I didn't have enough money and I was hungry, I didn't ask anybody for anything to eat. You know what I did? I said, Lord, I said, you're my father. I said, I'm hungry. I am hungry. I am hungry. I want me something to eat. I said, because I'm hungry. I feel this hunger pain. And I said, Lord, just, I said, I put my hunger and my pain in your hand. I didn't get anything to eat. But guess what? I, the, the Lord comforted me. I went to sleep. I woke up. I didn't wake up hungry. And the Lord provided a meal at my point of time. What I'm just saying, whatever my situation is, I, I because I was so close to God, so I am close to God, I can tell him anything. He would take care of it. That doesn't mean, doesn't mean that because I'm hungry, he's going to find You know, he can have somebody bring me a meal. That's what he wants. But he could also satisfy me with that. He also could give me that strength. And, and, and when I'm waking up, I'm not thinking about food. I'm thinking about doing what I need to do and go on. So that, that hunger didn't have no, no hindrance to, to what I needed to do. And I wasn't feeling that hunger pain. I wasn't, feel, I wasn't suffering. Come on. I was strengthened. And that's what he did. That's what he gave me. He didn't give me natural bread. He gave me spiritual strength for my natural body. Glory to God. And I didn't wake up hungry. I was, I was hungry no more. And when, 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 when the food was provided, I wasn't over hungry at, at my point in time. And all was well. So this is what I'm trying to say. There's purpose for you and I to draw nigh unto God. Because guess what? When we are getting bombarded, when the enemy is, is hitting us on every side, we need to come out of the rain. The Bible says here in verse 12, it says, they shall bear us up who the angels in their hands, unless thou dash thy foot against the stone. Not only should we be bared up and protected and provided for, but we also, too, have to take a stand. We also, too, we, we, we are soldiers in the army of God. We're fighters. We're warriors. Come on. And so, therefore, the, 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 the Bible says that the word of God stands up in a man. Come on, somebody. And he says that in verse 13, thou shalt tread, this is a war thing, upon the lions and the adders and the young lions and the dragons shall be trampled under our feet. I don't care what we're going through. We can still stand on God's word. We can still put the enemy to flight. We can still have that enemy to flee from us because why? Not we're saying go devil, go. No, no. As we embrace God, the devil cannot come into the secret place. As we go nigh unto God, there's a place, there's a line drawn. Come on, somebody, that the devil can't cross. Children of God, do you ever wonder why the devil fear the blood of Jesus? See, the blood redeemed us. Come on, purchased us back to God. But that blood was never redemption for the devil. And that's why he hates the blood. That's why the blood comes against us. The devil can't be saved through the blood, but you and I can. And that's why we apply the blood of Jesus over our life, because he can't, that blood, when it touches him, it destroys his works. 
So he, that's why when you're in trouble, come on, you, yeah, call 911, but make sure you call the blood. Make sure you say, Lord, I plead blood over me. I plead blood over my car, over my house, over my children. You hear some bad report, go to God. Say, God, come on, we got to get, we got to get the blood working because the blood still works. 14, it says, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him and set him on high because he has known my name. We draw nigh to God because this is the heart of God for you and me. He loves us unconditionally. He hates our sin. If you go draw nigh to God, come on, clean up. Come on, confess your sin. Don't come to God. You can't draw nigh to God. I'm going to tell you something like this. And this is the honest truth. If you're full of pride, if you're full of anger, you're full of unforgiveness, you cannot draw nigh to God. It's just like your child. If they got a lot of mud on them and I came out of the rain, they can't come and be hugging you and dirty you up. They got to get clean. They got to get washed. Come on. They, and that's what you do. You, you clean your kid up. You wash that stuff off your child. Come on. Put them on clean garments. And you, you're happy now to embrace them. The same thing with God. This is what the blood is for. This is what the altar is for. Too often, you know what? You know, we, we can't do this with God. We can't commit sins and, 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 and different things and go to God like we never did nothing. Let me tell you something. Repentance is not repeating. Come on, somebody. We have to come to God in, in the altar. We have to ask the Lord not only to forgive us, but the Bible said he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You got to come clean. You got to come clean. I, I, I forgive my enemy, but do, do, do you love your enemy? Come on, somebody. Come clean. Come clean with God so that you can draw nigh to him. God is holy. And he said, I'm holy. Be thou holy. This is what he let get close to him. God don't let nothing else get that, get that close to him, but that which is like him. Glory to God. That which is like him. Holiness. Come on. God don't let the world get close to him. God don't let uh, 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 the enemy get close to him. No. No, it gets away from him because God don't look at man's flesh. He looks at man's heart. And that's where the holiness must dwell within. Verse 15, it says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him and with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And let's go back to the um, number six. Um, my close to God is that God will satisfy us with his salvation. The writer was saying, you know, even James was saying, even in the midst of the follies and the problems and the situation, and even the way the bad behavior of the church, there's an answer for this problem. There was an answer for Miss Carmichael for this problem when she was hearing the voice of God that you draw nigh unto him. You, you may not hear the word, but you might hear the wooing. You might see the love. You might see the invitation. Someone, someone. You always have somebody just come and just, just, just say hi to you in such a beautiful way. That's God speaking. God didn't say hi, but the, this is the, just the presence of just someone's kindness towards you. That was God saying, I love you. Come on, somebody. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Because many, many people can pass by you and don't say anything to you. Did you receive that? Did you receive that blessing? Because that was a blessing. They didn't have to do it. And so the, 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 she was saying that come close to God. That means you have to make a choice, a decision. Like I said, we do not serve God blindly. You have to intentionally serve God. You have to intentionally do what you do. You have to make a choice because your will is still active. And God will draw nigh, will draw close to you. And what, uh, what it's just saying is this, God will be intimate with you. God will answer your prayers. God will answer your questions. God will uh, 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 cover you when, you when you when you think you're about ready to perish. But he said, no, you might feel the wind. You might feel the heat, but you're in my hand. You will not get the defeat. And let us read the prayer to the Lord. May I know you to the extent and the depth of my being. Work your heart into the depth of mine, even when no words can describe what you have placed there. Share your deepest impulse with me. That's the joy God joined on to us. He wants to listen. He wants to us to see his heart. 
and his thoughts towards us. Too often we have the wrong picture of what God sees in you and me. He sees his son. He sees the blood that his son shed. And I was like, oh, God, I can't help. I have to get this one scripture. I do it all the time. This is what Jesus is doing. Glory to God. Let me get to it, Lord Jesus. Go to Jude chapter 1. It's only one chapter in Jude. Only one chapter in Jude. I just want you to get a picture, a clear picture of what God is doing. Jude chapter 1. And um, I want you to start with verse 24. I use this as a benediction, but it's true. Now to who, to him, to who? God, that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless. Let me do go back. Now to him, that's Jesus, who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He can only do that if we're close. He can only do that if we're in agreement and alignment with him in obedience to him. He can only do that if we are in our rightful place in him. The rightful place for a child of God to be in God is in a place of obedience, in a place of love, in a place of surrender. Come on, children of God. To the only wise God our Father be glory. Majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. That is the purpose of joy night, close to God. Even though we're in this world, we still have kingdom living to do. And the word of God shows us the best way to live. Kingdom citizen victory is to be close and intimate with the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word today. We bless you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Father, we thank you for the times we heard you and we didn't know what you were saying, but we know what was said. We thank you for speaking even now unto us, oh God, to, 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 to have us to, to, to come closer to you. That we don't have to carry these burdens ourselves. Or you said that to cast all our cares upon you, for you care for us. Thank you, Lord. And as we draw close to you, we give you the goods. We give you the, 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 the house payment that we don't have to pay. We give you, uh, uh, we give you the, 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 the report of the sickness, Father. We take up the report of healing. We give everything that we have no control of. We put it in your hand. For your plan said, I know the thoughts and I know the things I think towards you. They're good and not evil. We got a hope in a future. Help us to seek you with all our hearts. You said you'll let us find you. And you're in that place, that place that we dwell and we abide. Father, we're praying for the media right now. Father God, let the media, Father God, be transformed into a, a place where people can be truly informed. Father, begin to map that system clean it out, begin to expose the dark side of it, begin to bring light in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to have our, even our community newspapers so that we can know what's going on in our community. Help us, oh God, in our media, uh, the, the wisdom of God to go to the saints, stop putting your personal information out there for everybody to see. Lord, you said our weapons of warfare are not common. They're not worldly, but they're mighty through you and tearing down strongholds. Help us, oh God, not to allow the enemy to come in like a flood because of what we provide. We thank you for all things, God. We give you glory in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Back to you. <laughs> Bless the Lord, Teacher Williams. This morning, we just have another message from on high and a beckoning of Holy Spirit to come and dwell in the presence of God. And in his presence, there's, there's no need for words. 
when, when we're in the presence, when we get to that place, there's no need for words. And um, the song, Draw Me Nearer, Nearer Blessed Lord, that, that song came up in my spirit and I pondered the lyrics of it. And it's a plea for God to bring us closer to him. And I thought about that and I said, sometimes it's because we don't know how to draw on our own. And, and something you said this morning that, you know, we're so busy doing things that uh, God has not asked of us to do, or we're doing them without God. And so we just pray, God, help us, help us to draw nigh to you. Because in a world of, of uh, busyness and, and um, uh, what is it, the things that come, disruptions, <clears throat> disruptions and um, so much activity, distractions, that's the word I'm looking for, distractions, things always pulling at us. When they pull at us, they're drawing us away from him. And so that's our prayer. Lord, draw us nearer to thee. Because as you read through 91, in that secret place, there are so many blessings of the Lord. There's a peace, there's a joy. And, and, and being able to come into that presence, my God, where you just, you feel God, you feel him. I don't know if it's in the flesh or spirit or what, but you know he is there. There's a strong presence of the Lord. Man, that's where we want to be. That's where we want to be. But he gives us the, the, the invite or the instruction. You draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. We're talking the God of the universe. Our Abba, our daddy is saying, come close. Come get close to me. And in the time of trouble, Hallelujah. That's when we really want to try and draw near to the Lord because that's where we get the best comfort. That's where our fears are alleviated. God bless you this morning, teacher. We thank God for you. We thank God for your gift of ministry, your gift of teaching. Amen. And, and we're going to take this word to heart today. We're going to take it to heart. Anyone else this morning want to share? Hallelujah, Jesus. There's some prayer requests. Good morning. I'm sorry. Good morning, Apostle. Uh, won't take much time. Um, yesterday, I was, what you were just saying is sometimes when you just sit in the presence of the Lord, you don't have words. It's like heart to heart. You hear his heart and he hears your heart and and you're communing, but you're not opening your mouth, but it's a heart to heart communion. And I was asking the Lord about something in my heart. I didn't speak it with my mouth, but he was speaking to me and I was speaking to him. It's like you say, we, we, it's, the world is so busy and sometimes we're so busy and I feel obligated. I said, Lord, I, I wish I could just stay here. I said it in my heart. I, I wish I could just stay here and never have to leave. Oh, yes. Right now with you. And he, he asked me a question. I'm not opening my mouth, but heart to heart, we're speaking. Yes. And he said, well, why not? I said, Lord, because I feel so obligated. Mm -hmm. I got to do this and I got to do that. But I would rather stay here with you. Mm -hmm. 
be here with you, but I feel so obligated sometimes that it moves me from this place and I don't like it, but I feel like I have to do certain things. And there are things we do have to do, but even in that moment, uh, uh, the, the scriptures tell us like a day is like, you know, with the Lord is there. And then, yes, you know, so I'm saying this moment is like a whole year with you. Mm. This one moment, you could change my entire life. But because I'm pulled, I feel pulled, being pulled out of this place that I don't want to be. Uh, I love the way in Psalm 91, in that secret place. Yes. Hiding place where when the world is, things are trying to overwhelm me, I can just rest in his arms and, and I can get the refuge and I can get the strength that I need to face whatever I have to face. And I know the enemy can't find me there. He has to use something to try to pull me out. To get my attention, because he see, he know I went in, but he don't know what's going on while I'm in there. So he has to try to draw me out. But I, I've come to the place, and I'm coming to the place where I will not be drawn out. I will stay right here. Yes. And, yes. And I kept wondering why the Lord kept giving me the same scripture in, in Psalm 27 and 8. And then I finally, I finally get it. You know, we finally get it. <laughs> we finally get it. I heard the Lord saying to my heart, come and talk with me. Come mm -hmm. And I heard my heart say back to him, Lord, I'm coming. Mm. Just sit down and talk with me. Don't be so rushed. Don't be so eager to jump up and call about your day. Yes. Sit down and talk with me. That yes. Yes. that I yes. talk with the Lord can mean a whole difference in the way my day goes at that, that moment at my, my beloved pastor that kairos moment i couldn't even move i couldn't mm. move all i could do was cry and just heart to heart like the commentary was saying i was saying no word but my heart just drew near to him i could hear him and he could hear me even though he spoke though i spoke no words Mm, mm, mm. That's the place. That's the place that we want to be. That when troubles come, we are confident. We are fully persuaded that He that hath promised is more than able. Hashetoro. He is more than able to do what He has said. He asked mm. me, "Do you believe me? Believe in the Lord your yes. God. Believe in me. Trust me. Trust mm. me." And then he said, I will, I will, I will cause you to you, you to, to to succeed. Believe my prophets. Believe, I believe my pastor. Yes. Believe the word. When I believe, I believe the word they give because it's the word of God. And because mm -hmm. I know I have the love of God in them for his people, they're not gonna send me into an ambush. Amen. They don't believe God is saying. So I got to believe God and I got to believe them. And I'll succeed. Mm -hmm. Prosper. So thank you, teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm finding that every day it is vital. It is a vital necessity. Just like when you go to the hospital, they have to get your vitals stable that you won't mm. die. They have to regulate that heart. They have to get everything that like is supposed to be for you to continue to live. It is mm -hmm. a vital necessity to draw near to him because it's in him we live. It's in him we move. And it's in him we have our being. So we have to draw near. Yes. Yes. Have a blessed day. Love you, Apostle. God bless you. Love you more. Mm. Good morning. Teacher William, um, you blessed my soul this morning. I received through your teaching and this word the confirmation that I needed. Um, I heard a report on Monday and I, 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 I stood on God's word, spoke God's word, but this authenticated and confirmed for me how the clear instructions that I need to do. So I thank God for the word, powerful teaching, and this spoke to my heart. Praise heart's. God. Amen. The word is such a blessing. 
is such a blessing to us. Anyone else? Um, I want to call your attention to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. And I'm just going to read this from the Good News Translation. It says, we have then, my friends, the heading of it is, let us come near to God. It says, we have then, my dear friends, complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way through the curtain that is through his own body. We have a great priest in charge of the house of God. Verse 22, and this is the, the key verse. It says, so let us come near to God. And watch this. With a sincere heart and a sure faith, with hearts that have been purified from a guilty conscience, hallelujah, and bodies washed with clean water. And she touched on that this morning, hallelujah. We can't draw nigh any kind of way, any kind of way. Um, we have to have sincerity in our hearts. We've got to be, it says, with the full assurance of faith. We have to have that confidence in what God has said he is able to perform. We have to know that we've been born again, that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from an evil conscience, it says. Our hearts have been sprinkled. It's the blood of Jesus hallelujah, that has been sprinkled on our hearts to wash away our sin. So it delivers us from that evil conscience. My God, Jesus. And then he says, and our bodies wash with pure water. The water of the word, it cleanses us. It washes us. So we can present our bodies as living sacrifices. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so, again, the word is saying to us, come near to God. Come near to God. And sometimes we just have to cry out, Lord, I, I'm not sure how to come, but draw me to you. Oh, Jesus. And sometimes it's those trials that we go through that draw us because there's no other place we can go. Jesus asked the disciples, will you go away? I'm, I'm saying you got to eat my body and drink my blood. And, and the word says so many left him. And he turned to that inner circle. Will you go too? And one of them proclaimed, where are we going to go? Where are we, where are we going to turn to? Nothing else. Nothing else has satisfied us. You have the words of life, of eternal life. We're not going anywhere. And that has to be our stance. That, that has to be our profession of faith. We're not going anywhere but drawing closer to you, Father. We bless God today. There's some prayer requests. In the chat, um, Teacher Williams, I don't know if you can see them, but I'll read them to you. Um, I'm sorry. Say it again. I can see them. Okay. 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 All right. 
as 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 she lifts up these requests and closes us out let us let us as a unified body there's some needs here in the chat let us as a unified body hallelujah draw near to god on behalf of those that have need of him on today god bless you teacher williams it's back to you Praise God. Praise God. Father, we uh, just glorify you today, Father, for your presence. We thank you for your word today. Father God, we thank you that you will send us on our day, Father, that you will overshadow us, Lord God, that you will keep us in all our ways, oh God. You bless our going out and our coming in, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your abiding peace, your, your abiding presence. We thank you for your sent word because you sent your word to heal us and save us from destruction. We're praying, Father, for the protection and the healing and holiness and prosperity and wisdom. Them, uh, for the family of Nina, oh God, in the body of Christ. We thank you for the sister who, oh God, who loves us enough, oh God, to pray for others, Lord. We ask that the prayers also will be, oh God, attached to her, Lord God, the blessings of the Lord, the favor of God, uh, the prosperity, the healing, the wisdom, whatever sister Nina needs, Lord God, it shall be provided according to the riches and glory. Lord God, if we pray for our God for the request for sister Diana McQueen. We pray for Kenny Howard, Charlie's nephew. Lord God, we thank you for doing this fourth surgery. We thank you that Jesus, you are the great physician. You're the one. Get into his hand and to his mind, oh God. Get into everything that goes into his veins, oh God. I pray that, Lord, you will overshadow the surgery, the procedure, oh God, that it be successful. Lord, I thank you for a quick and a speedy recovery, Lord God. I pray for a peace, oh God, that passes understanding. Let your perfect love cast out every spirit of fear, Father God. Bless, oh God, God, this uh, young man to rise up in Jesus' name. Father, we pray um, that as you set Sister Nina apart, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, that you will meet every need, that no weapon form against us shall prosper. And every every experience that she has in her life is for her, her growing and for her to know that the Lord is her light and her salvation. Whom shall she fear, Father God? We thank you, Lord, that you are, Lord God, making yourself known and manifested in, in her and through her, Father. We thank God uh, for our Sister Nicole. Uh, we thank God for my daughter. We bless her, oh God. We pray, Father, sir, sister Vanda's husband, Quincy. We, we we thank you, Lord. Your report says that by the stripes of Jesus, he's ever been healed, whole, and set free. And, Father, you choose how you choose to bring the healing. But we, Lord, stand on the word that you will yeah. heal him. And you would deliver him and save him from destruction. And so we speak the word that you said you would restore health unto him and heal him of his wounds, says the Lord. We would send the word of God to him. And on his behalf, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we also, Lord God, uh, ask that you would uh, continue to bless us, Nicole, and all that's her request this morning as you're speaking to her and through her, Father God. Bless this woman, of God, that her, Lord God, be led by your spirit, oh God, to greater heights and deeper depths, oh God. In you, she truly abides under your shadow. We thank you for Sister Joni, Lord, today. Sister Nicole, um, thank you, Lord God, for her today. Thank you for her uh, being one, Lord, of one who... Eat your word and also do your word, O oh God. And we just ask you to continue to bless her. And Lord, meet her at the point of her need, O oh God, Sister Natalie, today, O oh God. We ask that you would bless her as well, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just thank you for all here on uh, the prayer line today, O oh God. We thank you for every need. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus being met, we thank you, Father. There will be nothing broken, nothing like it, because you are a good shepherd, Lord God. And as we draw an eye to you, oh, God, you are the one that knows how to take care of all our needs according to the riches of glory. Bless, oh, God, Apostle, Dr. Gain, Apostle Gain on this prayer line. Bless the, them, bless their hand, bless their going, their coming, their doing. Overshadow them. Bless, oh, God, uh, Pastor Fox, Lord, her, her, both both uh, Johnny and um Lady Shandon, bless them, Lord, like never before. Father, let them know, Father God, this is their season, uh, Father God, to be blessed. This is their season for God to move like never before. Sometimes God used the foolish things in this world to confound the wise just to bring them to a great place. And so we pray the blessings of the Lord to continue to run the man and the woman down and overtake them in this hour and this season. Bless everyone on this prayer line. Meet everyone at the point of their knees, Lord God.
There's nothing too hard for you. And we ask that you continue to lay your hands and bless Pastor uh, Apostle Carolyn Wallace and SWAT. Bless all who have ministry, all who are leaders on this line. We ask that you would take the load and the burdens off their shoulder, cast their cares upon you, Lord God. But we pray for a mighty miracle. We pray, Father God, that you would do exceedingly and bondly above what anyone can ask or think of. So we give you praise and glory and honor for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.